say? Jessica said? Uh, nothing. Oh, George, you're a family man, not a rotter. <laughs> Stuff it. Well, then he was sorry you said it. Well, she meant well. It was simply that well, a, a man had to work hard to keep his balls. He, he looked sideways at her. Wear, wearing the armadillo crash suit with its overlapping disks of ceramic material, she looked like a furry flight pilot. The bang-up hat hit her face. He wanted to apologize, but the moment had arrived. He locked the laser on the Merc, depressed the fire stud, and a beam of blinding light flashed from the hood of the piranha. With the Merc on air cushion, he had gone straight for the fuel tank. But the Merc suddenly wasn't in front of him. Even as he had fired, the driver had sheared left into the next 40-foot wide lane and cut speed dramatically. The Merc dropped back past them as the piranha swooshed ahead. He's on my back, Jack sh George shouted. The next moment, Spandau slugs tore at the hide of the Chevy. George slapped the studs and the bulletproof screens went up, but not before ping holes had appeared in the beryllium hide of the Chevy, exposing the boron fiber filaments that gave the car its lightweight maneuverability. Stop her, George breathed. Terribly frightened, the driver was on his back, could ride him into the ground. He swerved, dropping flaps and skimming the piranha back and forth in wide arcs across the two lanes. The Merc hung on. The Spandals chattered heavily. The screens would hold, but what else was the driver running? What were the coded options the CC operator had mentioned? Now see what you've gotten us into. Jess, shut up, shut up. The transceiver queaked. He studied it on, still swerving. This time, the driver of the Merc was sending via microwave video. The face blurred in. He was a young boy in his teens. Acne. Punk! Stinking punk! <laughs> George screamed, trying to swerve, drop back, accelerate. Nothing. The blood-red Merc hung on his tail fin, pounding at him. 